part of our lesson, we want to take a look at the topic probability. Probability is a topic that is widely used across all areas when it comes to our daily life and activity. So probability is more or less like not only a mathematical topic, but also applied in so many areas. But now we want to treat probability as a mathematical topic. So we'll look at some characteristics of probability, some formula in probability, the laws of probability, and how we can even solve questions in probability pertaining to mathematics. Now, without much ado, let us first of all look at the introduction of probability, then we'll narrow it down to the calculations of probability. What is probability? That is a question I'll first of all ask. Probability is a word which is commonly used in our everyday conversation. Probability comes from the word probable, which also means maybe. Words like chance, likely, uncertain also have the same meaning as probability. Now, for example, we say probably I will go to the market as a statement for probability. Also, we have another statement like it is likely that I will get an excellent grade in mathematics. So if you take these statements I just mentioned, you realize that there are degrees of uncertainty in the statement. That means that it is not sure whatever I said or talked about in the sentence is going to happen. Let's take another sentence like, the chance of the world getting a cure for COVID-19 is high. So I use the word chance because it is not certain. We can get a cure and we can also not get a cure. But we are believing that we get a cure as soon as possible. Let's continue. This degree of uncertainty that I talked about in the probability can be measured with the help of probability. So if you are able to get a sentence with uncertainty in it, it means that we need to get the level of the uncertainty or we need a value to represent the uncertainty. And that is when probability as a topic in mass comes in to measure that level of uncertainty that you have in a value or in a form of a number. The theory of probability has its origin from the game of chance. For instance, tossing coins, throwing of die, drawing of a card from a pack of cards, and even lottery and many others are example of probability game. All these games are uncertainty games because if you want to toss a coin, you toss a coin not to favor you. The coin will, the coin will roll or toss naturally to point out the face of the coin to show. Also, if you are playing Lodo and you roll the die on the glass, you realize that the Lodo die will show the particular face that it wants to show, not the one you want. So it could be the one you talked about or it could be another one. So that means that rolling a die is a probability action, which means that the outcome or the answer or whatever that shows is not certain. Whatever that shows will not be certain for you. So that makes it a probability. Now today, probability is an important branch not only in mathematics, but with applications in statistics, economics, industry, science, and technology. As I rightly said, once we are treating probability in math, it means that we are going to look at some calculations around probability. But nevertheless, probability can also be used in other sectors which are not even mathematically related. We can talk about statistics, we can talk about the industry, we can talk about science and technology, economics and so on. Probability are used in all these areas to help solve problems. At this part of our probability, I want to introduce you to something called definition of terms in probability. Now, in probability, we are going to look at so many calculations and so many activities. But it is good for us to know the terminologies associated with all these questions and activities in probability. And that is why this chapter or this part of the probability is very important. Please, I will urge all of you to pause the video, read the, the theory part or read the literature very well. So that you'll be able to understand the terminology as we are going to explain to you in the video and also use it in solving questions for you. So first of all, let's take a look at the first one called experiment. Now what is an experiment? An experiment is any operation whose outcome cannot be predicted with certainty. The following are examples of experiment. Number one, tossing a fair coin. Number two, throwing of a die. Number three, drawing a card from a pack of cards. 
Now, experiment means that whatever you're about to do is not predictable. You cannot tell us the outcome by a prediction. So if you toss a coin or you throw a die and you draw cards from a pack of cards, you realize that the outcome is not predictable. So that is what we call experiment. In all the above examples I gave in the experiment, you realize that the outputs are not certain. Now let's take the number two terminology, which is number two, trial. Now what is trial? A trial is a single performance of an experiment. That is to say, you want to try something to see whether it will work or it will not work. In this condition, we call such a performance as a trial. Let's go to the next one. Number three, we have outcome. The word is outcome. Now, outcome becomes the result of an experiment. So finally, if you do an experiment and you get the result, the result that you got becomes an outcome. Let us take a look at another one. Now, with outcomes, we have two different types of outcome. We have something called equal likely outcome. Now, the equal likely outcomes will be in an experiment. The outcomes which have equal chances of occurring are called equal likely outcome. So, for an example, if we toss a coin, the outcome head and tail are equally likely outcome. It means that the head can occur and the tail can also occur. So, in a situation like this, we can say that these two outcomes are equally likely to occur. Let's continue. Now, it becomes that in view of this, head and tail are considered as equally likely outcome. Also, if you toss a die or you throw a die, one, two, three, four, five, and six are the faces of the die. We can boldly say that all these faces are equally likely outcome because they are likely to occur. You don't show what will occur. The die itself rules the face that should occur. So then we conclude that all the faces are equally likely outcome. Let's talk about another terminology called random sampling. Random sampling. Now, this is choosing a sample from a population without being biased. So if you talk about random sampling, you have just some portion that you want to talk about. So out of the whole, you just take some small part of the whole and then you what you use it to represent the entire thing. So random sampling is when you take a portion of a whole to represent the whole thing. Now let's go to the next terminology called event. Now an event is a collection of the sample points with the common property. It is a subset of the sample space. So for example, when a die is cast, the event E of showing the even numbers will be 2, 4, 6. It means that you can get the appearance of something from whatever you did. And those appearances are what we call the event. Now also, when two dice are tossed, the event of getting exactly a head is head, tail, and then tail, head. So it means that with all these, if you're able to toss a die, you realize that we get head, tail, and then tail, head. Why? Because if two dice are tossed or a die is tossed, two dice are tossed, you realize that these are the outcome of getting one head and one tail. So head, tail, and tail. Head. Now ahead of our class, we will go through these ones very well. Now at this point, let's take a look at the types of event that we have. Now the first type of event is a certain event. Now, an event which contains all the sample space is referred to as a certain event. That means if you are able to get all the sample space or all the occurrences that you need in a particular trial or experiment, then we are talking about the fact that that event that you performed becomes a certain event. The next type of event is what we call the impossible event. Now, an impossible event is an event which does not contain any sample points, the event becomes impossible. If after everything that you do, you don't see any result or any sample point in reference to what you performed to get the event. So if the event has been performed and then no sample point or no outcome is shown, then it becomes an impossible event. Now, the next type of event is a complement of event. Let us understand how it looks like. Now, let me give you S as a sample space, and let me give you A as 
an event of the sample space. Now, if you want to talk about complement of event using these two, you realize that the set of all the sample points which are in S but are not in the A is what we call the complement of the event A. And that is denoted as A prime with A with a prime on top. So it is very simple. You have S and you have A. And then S becomes the sample space of the total possible outcome. And A is also coming from S. The question is, whatever is in S that A couldn't get is what we call the complement of A. So it is so simple. I have S to be, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I have A as 3, 4, 5. Now you realize that this set becomes a sample space. That is total number of possible outcomes. And A becomes just out of the S. Now there are some values or some terms or some elements in the set S that are not in the set A. So for that matter, it becomes a complement of the set A denoted like A prime. So let's see those sets in the sample space here that are not in the set A. I have one which is not in A, so one. I have two and it's not in A, so two. And then three is there, four is there, five is there. So these are the two numbers that are not in the set A. So they become the complement of the set A. Mutually exclusive events will be the next type of event. Now, if A and B are events such that the two events cannot occur together or the same time, then we say that the event A and the event B are mutually exclusive. That is to say, A and B has no intersection. So the intersection of A and B becomes a null set. So A intersection B becomes equal to a null set. That means it becomes an empty set. There is no intersection for them. So that means that mutually exclusive events do not occur together or they have nothing to do with each other. They have no intersection. So for that matter, their intersection is a null set or an empty set. So please don't forget that mutually exclusive event has nothing to do with each other. They don't occur based on the other. They don't depend on each other and they have no occurrences together or no intersection.